trying to do here uh, over the past few weeks, me and my friend Connor, who's behind the camera, uh, we've been trying to work on combining Raspberry Pis, which are small computers, um, seeing if we can put them together and get them to work together to solve complex mathematical and computing problems. So um, the base principle with any computing is you take the problem and you split it up into a set of instructions that are fed to the CPU. Um, now in multi-processing or parallel processing, most of our computers already do a form of parallel processing. Um, and how it works is it, um, you have the shared memory of the problem and each CPU takes a portion of the problem. So um, the challenge we faced, because although this technology already exists in our everyday PCs, is how to interface it between separate computers, each with separate operating systems running and separate um, disk drives and memory. So the way you do that is using a program called MPI, or Message Passing Interface. Um, and how it works is just like this. You have the master node, which is the initial computer that starts all of the computation and the communication, um, normally called the master node. It initializes the MPI communicator. So the communicator essentially starts three Python instances, which is the programming language that we're using, or three Python um, processes, each on the operating system of each of the three computers that we have. So this initializes the communication, and then each one receives a Python instance. Um, and, then the I, and this happens through IP addresses. It assigns, it SSHs each one of them, and uses, their, and uses that in order to start the processes. Once it's done that, you move into the more complicated part of MPI, where what you do is you instruct each process, um, each processor, to only execute a certain set number of lines of code. So, and then what they'll do is they'll send variables and data between each computer um, back to the communicator and then to the master node. So how a normal MPI program works is each one takes a portion of the calculation or a set number of lines of code that you've pre-written. And then it, once it, it calculates it, and once it's finished whatever calculation you've required, it sends the information through the MPI communicator back to the master node, which prints a result. The idea initially came from a professor at the University of Southampton. And he created at the university a 64 node Raspberry Pi supercomputer. And as soon as we found this out and realized that we could do it ourselves at our school, we decided we'd give it a try. So what our Raspberry Pi supercomputer actually does, as you can see on the computer over here, is it calculate something called the trapezoidal rule, which is a calculus function, where um, each, each process will calculate a certain set number of trapezoids, and then it'll send it back to the master process. I'm going to execute a program that runs on all three nodes. And I'm going to show, first of all, one that the program that can run on all three, only running on one of these nodes. So it initializes, it starts off by SSHing all the pies, initializing the communication. So there you go. It took 2.52 seconds for one Raspberry Pi to, count, to compute this, which is quite quick. However, if this was a larger computational operation, the pie would take a lot longer. So now I'm going to demonstrate the increase in speed that we realized. Now, speed will increase, but only to a point. If I have four times the number of pies, I will not necessarily get four times the computational advantage. So now I'm going to run this line of code right here. And what you're seeing is it's initializing, starting MPI. And now it's going to run the program. So as you can see here, it calculated the exact same result to the exact same accuracy. But it, received, it achieved a clock time of 0.87, which is about a little more than uh, a third. So with this, we are actually managing to compute things faster than we could with just one pi. And it's a great example of how modern day supercomputers work and how accessible supercomputing technology is. Over the last 10 or 20 years of doing research into these sorts of commodity-based systems, we've seen the price to be able to get something together go from millions of dollars down to hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. What you see here is about $4,000 or 2,500 pounds. Indeed, 
If you were to just use four of the Raspberry Pis, you'd be down at the hundreds of dollars price point. That means for the first time that it's accessible for schools, colleges to be able to do this kind of thing um, at home in their own time and have some fun with them. Um, the goal of doing this project with um, Raspberry Pis is to teach and under come to understand supercomputing um, in a way that anyone can do it. Anyone can make a supercomputer using Raspberry Pis. We use three Raspberry Pis which is about $100 worth of um, equipment. And it is a, it's a great learning experience. And getting into parallel computing is something that I'm really interested in. And I'd love to teach it to other students at my school. So our, our goal with this is to eventually go to a 16-node computer. Mm -hmm.